Today, I want to talk about the next head coach at Baylor and who it is likely to be. And all that's coming up after the bumper. Don't be cornering me. Hold up. Time. You gotta help me with that, that corner sh**. <laughs> What's up, Ken folks? It's RJ Young. I am not on a step mill. Consider hitting the like and subscribe button because I upload a video every single day. So it's college football related, sports related. We have a good time. And today... I want to talk about who could possibly be the next head coach at Baylor. And I want to do it by debuting a new feature. As you can see, this is the new part of the set where I sit in a lounge chair, give you my thoughts in a segment that we're calling about 10 minutes, where we use the egg timer, we set it to 10 minutes, and we talk about who could be the next head coach for the Baylor Bears. Because Matt Rule is up out of Waco after just three years at Waco. So... Backstory on this is Matt Rule takes the job at Temple after being an offensive line coach for the New York Giants. And after you take a job in college, after having coached in the NFL, all people will say is that guy can't wait to get back to the NFL, particularly in another capacity higher than the one that he left. So Matt Rule would go back as a coordinator or head coach. Seeing as Matt Rule ain't been no coordinator in college football over the last seven years, it felt like he was going to stop at nothing less than head coaching. But first, he needed to turn around Temple. His first season at Temple saw him go 2-10. and 10. In three years' time, they were a double-digit win program. Anybody that win at Temple probably can win anywhere else, okay? Two 10-win seasons. A birth in the American Championship game. He gets the call. Hey, we just had the worst sexual assault scandal in college football history down here in Waco, Texas. And uh, we really, really need a head coach that knows what he's doing. Well, seeing as they already got that fixed over there at Penn State, the only thing that he could do was go down there to Baylor to take that job. And do what my dad does for a living, which is fix dumpster fires, right? My dad. Worked Federal Express for a number of years as an operations manager, a station manager. And what he was really good at was going into a terribly run FedEx station and then flipping it. You know, like the housing shows, like where they flip houses, my dad would flip stations. Stations that were performing as some of the worst in the entire world, my dad would flip into top 25, top 10 stations. So much so that FedEx gave him an award for joining the Circle of Excellence, which means that you were one of the best stations in the world. Top flight, not just of the city, of the world, Craig. Okay? It's my dad. Matt Rule falls into the same ilk, right? The same brand of, hey, I come into a place, I do the disaster restoration bit, I flip a house, everybody wants the house that I flip. So at Baylor, he actually overestimated what he was going to do. Because after year one, they're 1-11, one and 11, but he also comes to find out he is emotionally drowning because he's having to carry everybody else at Baylor while nobody could carry him. So he asked his parents to come down to Waco to stay with him to help build him up. That works. Not only get a winning season the next year, they go to a bowl game. And then we get the magic year. Magic year is 2019. Three-year turnaround. They go 11-3 with two losses to Oklahoma and one loss to Georgia. And he takes the job at Carolina after... David Tepper traveled to his house in Waco, backed up the truck and said, what do you want? He's like, there's a lot of things I want. Yes, but tell me. Gives a seven-year contract worth $60 million at a minimum with $70 million in incentives. Means that Matt Rule is going to start making $8.57 million to coach the Carolina Panthers. Even as Eric Bieniemy is just up the road, but I got a Rooney Rule take that I'll get to later. Means that there's a new sheriff in town in 2020, whether you like it or not, in Waco. Now, Waco's a good job. Waco's a good job because they ain't expecting you to win no national championships in no Waco, Texas, baby. They ain't got to do that. You ain't even got to make the conference championship game, baby. All you got to do, win eight, nine games, they'll be ecstatic. You got outstanding facilities. You got a brand new stadium, McLean Stadium. You're never going to be up there going, I need to get paid more for the money I'm doing. Matt Rule is one of the top 10 highest paid coaches in America, according to multiple reports who can get inside the private, stu or private university finances of Baylor. So, who could take this job? Well, I think there's a number of fits. The first fit, I believe, is at Arkansas State. That would be Blake Anderson, who's gone 36-12 and 12 since 
being the head coach at Arkansas State going back to 2014. He's won two Sun Belt titles. He's making it work on a, sh- on a smaller budget. And everybody came to understand what makes Blake Anderson go this year when he lost his wife to a fight with breast cancer and the entire college football community wrapped its arms around him. The university wrapped its arms around him. He is a man of great faith and a man of great faith leading Baylor University is what you want. Add to that, he started his playing career at Baylor before st- traveling and transferring to Sam Houston State. So he also has ties within the state of Texas to recruit from, and he could pull kids to Central Texas. The next guy on the list for me is Josh Heupel. Josh Heupel's 22-4 and four as the head coach at Central Florida, including a 12-0 and 0 season last year. That'd be 2018, not 2019. Now, he inherited a program that also was 12-0 and 0 until, you know, of course, Josh Heupel lost the Fiesta Bowl to, excuse me, LSU, but everybody thought they were going to lose that game even as they were in it. And what's harder than building a winner, taking over a winner, and not screwing it up? So Josh Heupel came to understand how Central Florida worked, what made the program tick. He kept plays in that they liked. He tried to do things that they liked to do. He made a great effort in getting to know his players and his team because he's walking into a situation where they get to say, hey, we were perfect. Who the hell are you? He hired Jeff Levy, who has since been hired away from him at Ole Miss, also a dude that has ties with him at Oklahoma. We all know Josh Heupel, coached at Oklahoma, was an offensive coordinator there, won a national championship there, the only one in the last 20 years. And Torrance Marshall went and got his boys Heisman back when he beat Florida State in the national title game. We know that he knows this conference. We know that he knows the area, having coached at Missouri. So getting him back over here would also make a whole lot of sense if for another reason that he also would walk into another situation where he's inheriting a group of kids that know how to win. And they know how to win in this conference. 11 wins is never going to be a small thing in the Big 12, even as the Big 12 is not that big a deal. Okay? 10-team league, acting like a 10-team league last year, right? But Josh Heupel knows what he's up against. He knows what's in Norman. He knows what's in Austin. He knows what's at Texas Christian. He knows what he's here to do. He will go get you a quarterback that can follow up on what Charlie Brewer has done or even turn Jacob Zener into a winner, and you'll be fine there. There's a couple other guys that I feel like need to get looks. I know that Billy Napier is getting a lot of phone calls and there are serious discussions about him taking over, but I'm not enthusiastic about that hire because I think you can just do better. And how do I think you can just do better? Luke Fickle at Cincinnati would love to get an opportunity to coach at the Power 5 level, and I think that him getting overlooked for these jobs that have been opened like Florida State, for instance, means that he's got something to prove. He built a winner, an absolute winner at Cincinnati, right? We were talking about this team as a top 25 team right up until they played in the American Championship, losing for a second consecutive week to Memphis. But he's also got an up-and-coming defensive coordinator in Marcus Freeman that I really love and adore, that I would love to see get an opportunity to be a Power 5 defensive coordinator, let alone take over his own shop. Now, I'm not saying that Marcus Freeman should be the guy to go down to Baylor, but if you're not going to interview Luke Fickle, the least you could do is interview one of his assistants in Marcus Freeman. And there's a couple of other guys that I really would love to see get looks for this job, but none that would take it. Like Brent Venables is going to be at the top of everybody's want list, right? Everybody thinks that Brent Venables wants their gig. When all Brent Venables has said, I want to be the defense coordinator at Clemson. When the Kansas State job got open to him to go coach his alma mater, you know what he did? He stayed his behind in South Carolina. That tells you how devoted he is to Clemson football and be able to do his own thing as the defensive coordinator over there. Now, could we really see Jeff Nixon get this job? Assistant at Baylor. Yeah, we could. But I'm not going to buy that. I would also think that Matt Rule would want to argue to take his coordinators with him because he's had such, such success with them. Try saying that five times fast. With, at Temple and Baylor. Though, Wade Phillips has been informed his contract will not be renewed, and he's going to get fired on his day off from Los Angeles. You would love to get a proven defensive coordinator at Carolina to help you steward your first year, because it ain't going to be pretty your first year. Matt, you know this. You know it's going to take you three years to get anywhere near good in Carolina. I don't think that's going to be true for Baylor, right? That's the thing. He did all the work for you. So you're going to need to get somebody who wants to come in there and take the place over, but not just take the place over, but understands that there's 
there's a way to do this, and I need to ingratiate, my, my, ingratiate myself here. One more guy that I'm going to mention as the buzzer goes off. Hey, why not buy Graham Harrell out of his contract and make him the head coach at Baylor? All right, that's it for me. Deuces.